To set up the circuit that will allow us to control the pump from the Raspberry Pi, we'll need a few things. First, obviously the Raspberry Pi. Then we need a relay board, which is the blue component you see. This acts as a switch, which will allow us to turn on and off the pump. Next, we need a breadboard to set things up. And finally, we need six jumper cables along with a wall plug extender, which we cut and then split the wires. I'll, I'll explain this part more later on when it's a little bit confusing. To get things started, we first connect the necessary pins of the relay board to the breadboard. First, we connect the input 1 pin to any rail on the breadboard. Then we connect the ground pin on the relay to the ground rail of the breadboard. And finally, the VCC pin on the relay we connect to the positive rail on the breadboard. This will allow us to power it on from the Raspberry Pi. Now that we have that set up, we want to connect the Raspberry Pi to the breadboard so that we can control the relay. Since the pins on the Raspberry Pi aren't labeled like on the relay board, you will have to look up a pinout diagram online. First, we connect the 5 volt output pin of the Raspberry Pi to the positive rail on the breadboard. This powers the relay board. Next, we connect ground on the Raspberry Pi to the ground rail on the breadboard. And finally, we connect the GPIO pin from the Raspberry Pi to the same rail we connected the input 1 pin from the relay board. The specific GPIO pin you use doesn't matter, just make sure you mark down the number as we will need it later when we start to program the Raspberry Pi. Now we need to set up the pump with the relay. To do this, we need that extension cord I mentioned earlier. As you can see, it's just a cord I've cut near the end and then split and stripped the wires. This allows us to easily use it with the relay, which means we can control whether power is going through the cord and the pump is turning on, or power is not going through the cord and the pump is turning off. All I'm doing here is twisting the ends of one of the wires coming out to the cord, which will allow me to easily put it inside the relay board. So the way these relay boards work is a little bit unique. You can see there's a bunch of holes. We're obviously going to use the first relay because we connected our pin to input one. And to access those holes, you have to use a screwdriver and unscrew the screw above the hole, which allows us to put in the wire. And then once you put in the wire, you screw the screw back down tight, which holds the wire in place and make sure it's not going to get pulled out while we're trying to have our pump function. So we're going to do that for one of the wires and then do that for another one of the wires on the other end of the cord that we chopped off. That way we allow almost like a gate where we can close the gate and stop charge coming through or open the gate and allow it. So what you just saw is me putting one of the wires from the half of the wire that plugs into the wall into the center pin on the relay. And this because it's a common pin is the input to the relay and the two other pins on the replay. One is normally open, one is normally closed. When the relay is turned off, current flows through the normally closed pin. And then when you activate and turn on the relay, current switches and begins to throw, flow through the normally open pin. So for our purposes, we're going to put half of the wire that is on the half that is going to have the plug plugged into it. We're going to put that in the normally open pin because we want to be able to activate the relay and close the circuit and turn on the pump at will. If that last part's a little bit confusing, which I'm sure it might be because it's really hard to convey schematics over video, uh, be sure to look at the circuit diagram that will be included. For now though, because this is going to be plugged into the wall, there's going to be 60 volts coming through this, it could be potentially dangerous for someone to touch it. We don't really want these exposed wires coming out because that could give someone a shock, and if they're unfortunate, it could even be enough to kill them. So what we need to do is make it a little bit safer. And to do that, we use electrical tape, and we can wrap up the ends of the exposed wire so that no one's touching the exposed wire for one but also it does have another benefit in that it stops short circuits because if electricity was able to come between the two wires which aren't supposed to then it could short out our circuit fry our relay board fry our raspberry pi our pump wouldn't work anymore and it'd be a disaster it could even start a fire it, we don't really want that so just to be safe we're going to be wrapping the exposed wire in electric tape you don't really choose with jumper jumper cables because that's only five volts and very little current but for the part that plugs into the wall, it's good, better safe than sorry. You don't want to start a fire. You don't want anyone to get hurt. So we're going to be wrapping that with electrical tape. So to complete this part of the project, all we need to do is plug in the pump into the socket end of the wire we used earlier. And then when you're ready, you can plug in the other end of the wire into the wall. And uh, in the next video, we're going to be going over how to program the Raspberry Pi so we can turn the pump on and off with the setup in the replace.